Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, whatever time it is that is yours. I am honored to have my beautiful Peggy McCall, New York Times bestselling author, prosperity mentor, my success mommy, a person who really helped me, guided me, and, and on my beautiful journey over the last nearly three years we've been together. But mainly it is someone who helps so many authors to come to, to bring their baby books to light. And it is her 21st book, my very lovingly favorite book, Savvy Wisdom. And the third version is Savvy Wisdom from Beyond. And I've asked Peggy to come and tell us something because it is just such an amazing trilogy of book. And I'm gonna show them. The first one, if you haven't read them, I really highly recommend that stories are connected. So it's it, it really makes more sense if you read them all. And the first one is it has the power to change your life, which came with a beautiful handkerchief, which I've got <laughs> before Peggy. And the second is the sequel where Peggy actually talks about her challenging times she had to experience last year. And she sees it as a blessing, which she will tell you more about it. But mm -hmm. this one is actually my favorite out of them all, <laughs> which I say each time I read one, I told Peggy mm -hmm. it's my favorite, but this one really is because I love anything with divine intervention. Hi, Peggy, welcome. And we are really, th I'm thrilled to have you. <laughs> uh, thanks, Vladi. I was so excited when you asked me to do this because I don't think we've done an interview yet, have we? We have For on the first one. It was very, very beginning and okay so it's nearly it was when when it came out but yeah excellent well well as you know I'm very passionate about uh, all three books and Savvy Wisdom from Beyond was just released so it's very fresh in my mind and and you know to me they're like my babies you know I, I have a son and and grandchildren as well which I'm very blessed and I love them you know with all my heart and my books feel like family to me they, they really do they're they have such a special place. And of course, Savvy Wisdom from Beyond was my 21st book. And uh, I'm saying that it's my favorite, but I probably said that before. I'm certain that I said it about Savvy Wisdom 1 as well. But they they are messages that literally came through me. They were divinely inspired and the writing of the content was divinely guided. And it was an experience unlike any other experience I've ever had where I really just opened up to spirit and just put my fingers on the keyboard and just literally said, whatever needs to be written in this book, let it happen through me. And that's what happened. It was miraculous in, in a number of ways. I love that. You know, if I give, when, when you were doing the first one, I remember it was so powerful. And it's throughout all three books, I find it's like what happens to us Okay, let me say this way. I've heard actually Oprah, Oprah Winfrey to say this sentence. There is not a story that has been told, that hasn't been experienced. I love that <laughs> sentence. And your trilogy is so filled with, I could say, oh, you know how, how I love studying our materials, but you could find all the most powerful wisdom throughout the books. And it shows people how to apply this, which is the, such an important such an important key to actually implement the materials. What inspired so, you to go further? Like, did you know when you started writing the first one that you will actually go all the way to the book number three? Absolutely not. Definitely not. And it wasn't even in my consciousness as, a, as an idea. And uh, even writing the first one was kind of like an odd experience, how it occurred and how it came to be. Um, but after the first one was written, I just felt there's more, there's more to share, there's more wisdom. And then of course, as you mentioned, I went through a health challenge in 2021. And as a result of going through that, I found endless amounts of blessings and, and it was something that I overcame. And it was, uh, it was just a wonderful opportunity to share again. And so I felt inspired to write the sequel to Savvy Wisdom, just assuming that might be it. You know, it's the second book in a so-called series. But after that book was released and uh, it was so evident to me to write this third one, it was kind of like if, you know, if you've been bonked on the head like time and time again, come on, do this, do this, do this. You'll start to pay attention. 
And I felt like it was a, a spiritual bonk on the head, if you will, of a, uh, of a, uh, in, in, inspiration to move forward and and make it happen and it was such a surreal experience writing savvy wisdom from beyond as well because it is a different book as you know you've read it and it is an experience where sophie connects with spirit in a very unique way and it's not like a an area of expertise that i'm personally involved in there are other people that are very experienced in that but not for me and so with anything that we do as individuals, my paradigms were trying to hold me back. And anytime you make a decision to do something you've never done before, these old paradigms try and hold you back. Not because they don't want you to experience what you want to experience, but it's just the way we're conditioned as human beings, very habitual, you know, very, um, you know, in, in some people's cases, very rigid you know, as far as, as flexibility is concerned or doing something different, but I knew enough to understand the process of creation and knew enough to understand that the, the guidance that I was receiving was so strong. It was became a part of who I am that I knew that I was being called to do this and I decided I would do it. And I think once that decision is made, I made a couple further decisions. And one is that it was going to be easy and that it was going to be well done and that it would be a great product, like as a, as a book, you know, in the form that it's in right now. And so it's now available in Kindle form, soft paper, soft cover, paperback, hardcover. And I created the audio version of it as well. And of course, uh, we have Phil Goldfein who's shopping, you know, for the movie. And um, we had talked about it on the weekend, last weekend, and he had suggested um, he said, you're really good at, at writing and creating stories and creating the visual aspect of it so that the reader can see it. And he suggested, he said, have you ever thought about writing screenplays? And I have thought about writing screenplays, but the, the paradigm would say, you've never written them. You don't know how to do it. But I had the same thing when I wrote my first book is that, you know, I, I didn't, I hadn't done it before. So the paradigm was like, who are you to write a book? And what do you have to share? And, and I, you know what, we've got to recognize when those things happen and make decisions, like constantly make decisions on what you'd really love. And when this idea to, to write this had come to me, I just decided, I know it's going to serve people. I feel divinely guided. I, I feel the inspiration. It's a burning desire. It's an absolute passion. It fits with my purpose in life. So I'm going to do it. And I had the best time writing it. It was so amazing. But it's not about me. The book is not, a well, although it's written soapy and savvy, <laughs> but the book is for other people. It really is like when I got a, a message yesterday from a reader who told me that and this is what readers do. They associate themselves in the story. So this reader was telling me that her parent, one of her parents had passed away a couple of years ago and she had been struggling ever since, like constant struggle and felt embarrassed to talk to anybody about it because really thought that that should go away. And why is it not going away? But she continued to, you know, live in grief. And as you know, from Savvy Wisdom from Beyond, there can be, there can be not, not always, but there can be a destructiveness in that, in that you continue to relive the trauma and it hurt, it's hurtful right now that it's not, doesn't mean you're not going to miss the person. It doesn't mean you didn't love the person. It doesn't mean you're not going to honor the person. It's just a, a unique way of looking at it. And she said it really, she felt a healing and that, that went on as she was reading it. And then she said, she felt like the message was for her. And that's what you want to experience or have your readers experience is that shift for them. Cause that's why any author, that's why you wrote your book. I mean, that's why any of us write our books is because our desire is to impact others to, to bring something of value to them. And so when I'm getting these, you know, real life responses from readers on what it means to them, it's uh, it's living its purpose. It's doing what it's meant to do. And that is to make a positive and beneficial contribution to the lives of millions and millions of people. So I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful, as they say that that line, I'm grateful for the idea that has used me 
And I'm grateful that I was divinely guided to bring this to the world. I'm grateful that I had Bob Proctor in my life. I'm grateful to be where I am today and having the ability to write these and bring them out to the world. And I'm grateful for all the great things that it's going to do in this world, the impact it's going to make. I love that, Peggy. You know, like as you were talking, it all brings my transformation and the story of how really important it is to understand. And your books are so powerful and easy to understand for people. And I, I don't mean to sort of like say easy, but like you use the word easy, but so many people, sometimes we read something and it's kind of difficult to implement it in our life. And I have, which my my husband's family is not ready to share the secret, so I, I, I won't say the details, but I want him to read the book. And I already recommended it to six people just over the last two days because mm -hmm. people, it's really important how grief is a really destructive emotion. It, it can be really bringing into, and like you said, it's, it's just important to understand it. And if we have the understanding, like you're teaching us, and, and you know, today you read it in amazing uh, Club Achieve, where in all you're getting an understanding. If we understand, right. we respond to things as opposed to react, and it just happens different way. I love when you started writing. I used to say they were my two savvies because Peggy is my savvy and Bob was her savvy and it's kind of like, but the journey has been so powerful. Uh, and I love if everyone could just read books like this. And I really strongly recommend all of you to read all them because it's not something like Peggy said, you find yourself in the story at some part because something just relates to how we experience things. But it is so important to understand what happens further. It also helps us to understand how we can help other people, recommend it to other people, because I think that's the power. Like for me, recommending all this book immediately just got like, you must read that. You must read that because it really had a profound impact on me. And that's why I say I'm in love with that book because, you know, like I really, really enjoyed I love, like you said, it's it's written in a very powerful way. And even I was like, I'm reading, you know, I'm reading, uh, writing my book. And I think like, how does she do it? You know, I've been following Peggy because she's inspiring. She's a great example. And I'll talk about how quickly she, uh, she actually wrote the book because she made a decision. But that's part where we just procrastinate and don't get on with stuff. We just don't take action. We want to write a book about... You know that we think that we need a year, we need so many other things. All you need is follow someone who knows how to do it. And I right. say, I followed Peggy's book. When I became an international best-selling author in four countries, all I did was follow your course, really. And, right. and you know, English is not even my first language. Paradigms come all the time. But it inspired me, really inspired me how powerful you write because I overthink everything. I still do. Yeah. Like I realize how much I'm writing around the powerful little paragraph which you make so clear and I've looked back on the book I'm writing and I'm thinking I need to kind of tidy it up a little bit because that is so important but I love I love how you do everything and you're very fast action taken like I love you. You decided to write this book probably like you said it was circulating in your consciousness for a while but you took right. action and it was done in what 10 days or week well, this one, I, I started it, you know, it's hard to determine, I should have calculated the number of hours, actually, because I started it on the 28th of November. And I was just doing it like here and there. Because um, my agenda, as you know, is pretty darn yeah. busy with classes, etc. And I never wrote at night. And I, I think one weekend, I might have spent a few hours writing. Uh, so it took about three weeks, but it wasn't writing every day. It was writing sort of a little bit here and there. And a lot of people think it takes years to write a book and it doesn't. I mean, I did write one of my books in a day. I don't necessarily recommend that because that's a real, that was a real stretch of an experience for me. But nonetheless, it was a wonderful experience uh, for sure. And, um, but it it is like what you said. It's, you know, I think a lot of people, or allow their paradigms to hold them back. And because of the awareness that I have, I know what it is. Like I'll recognize it right away and I have a conversation with my paradigms. Like when the paradigm comes up and says, you know, who do you think you are to write this? It's like, you know, who, uh, who am I not to? Like I am, I'm born for this, right? This is yeah. absolutely what I'm here for. 
And so it's like, a, if you can imagine we, we're having an arm wrestle right now, right? It's the stronger one that's going to yeah. down the other. Okay. And that's what happens in our in our mind is that we get this arm wrestle going on and it's the old way of thinking and the old way of being that's going to try and hold you back. But then there's the other side that's going, wait a minute, like I've got a, you know, I've got a job to do here. Or I have a, a, a passion that I'm going to follow and I'm doing this and I'm just going to build the belief that I need to get there and bam, and you override it. And that's ultimately what you do. So just think about the arm wrestle and and that kind of thing goes on, or a tug of war, if you will. If there's a tug of war going on, one side's going to pull the other over and and win. They're both strong, and that's what happens with our paradigms as well. They're very strong. So when you develop such a depth of understanding of the materials of how it works, you know how to create success in your life, or how to create harmony, or how to create uh, abundance, or whatever it is that you want to create. When you understand it, then you'll recognize when there are limitations, when the thoughts that literally pop up, you know, boop, oh, I'm here to try and hold you back. Then you swish them, right? You're just like, no, you're not serving me. I'm aware of who you are. I'm not going to judge you. I'm just going to, and you could wrap your loving arms around it and say, thank you for revealing yourself to me. You no longer serve me. I'm replacing you. And I'm replacing you with a new belief. And that belief is this. And the belief that you replace it with, is usually an opposite belief of the one that holds you back. And it's, uh, you know, what's fascinating about all that, Vladdy, is it's it's a battle that doesn't just go on once. Yep. It very likely goes on every single day, right? It's like in Club Achieve this morning when we were studying and we're reading from another great book. And what he said, what the author had said is, this is not work you do once in a while or a day. You do it hourly, hourly. And I think about how many people are really doing it hourly, like really focusing on what they desire, feeling like it's in their life hourly. And um, I mean, that's really what it takes. And it doesn't matter how long you've been in the study or not. It still takes the same, yeah. the same concentrated effort and attention to get the results that you want. You know, it reminded me today when I was driving, I just realized how even when we do something once, like writing a book, and then you do another one, like for you, you have a real experience and helping so many authors as well. And really, they they created such an incredible success. How important the guidance is, because it's the habit. And yes. you don't create habit by doing it once, like exactly what you just said. And there are so many, unless we embed it and becomes part that when you're driving, I was driving and something, there was a thought of and I you, I was thinking how I lost control of the car, but your subconscious is running you. You don't have to control all the time. That's why you have to make sure, well, you know this, but you know, like we need to make sure that actually we are auto suggesting and our subconscious is so filled with this amazing stuff. And it's including writing the books. Like I really, really love how you really teach the mindset is so powerful and if you don't get there are so many authors i know which are not in our industry so you know mindset is not the number one thing they start with we could say and they say how, like how did you do that it, it, it's it's again it's like this doesn't follow like rules i said yeah because you're like almost guided by certain patterns and you believe yeah. it's the best and this is why people believe i have to do this first and then i'm gonna have a wealth and success and stuff it doesn't work like that. And making a decision to write a book, you can take and wake up hour sooner in the morning. That's how I used to do it. Morning in the evening, right. morning in the afternoon, or just whenever. And I finished mine in six weeks. But you being guided and being in an environment of people who are helping you to think right, you just get inspired. Right. What you say, I love about the books that it's not just for individuals. Like, it is for individuals, but it's for corporations, sports people. There is no, it's for children. I would love, like Joshua read the first one. I remember when I was camping with him. I was oh and, you know, it is so important that these messages are then impacting you, become a ripple effect of people because there is something that stands out that allows you to go deeper. Like you right. can help your parents, your your friends, whoever is really struggling to understand that they are actually on the frequency of struggle 
Sometimes yeah. people say, oh, but you don't understand. People do want do do this a lot. But if you're on the frequency of struggle, then you, you're attracting more struggle. So reading these, I would absolutely recommend. It gives you like a almost complete, I shouldn't say complete because maybe there is a number four. <laughs> and movie, <laughs> I see this on a movie. I like I, I mean, Peggy, tell us, is there, do you see, do you have a vision to have it as the greatest movie on the screen? Definitely, you know, and, and uh, I mean, my vision for the message is, is quite massive. And, you know, it's interesting because it was Bob that first grabbed a hold of that vision. I mean, he really saw it and felt it. And I have goosebumps even as I say that because he would send me texts and he said, like, he was crazy about savvy wisdom. And I've written other books. Bob's written the forward for my other books, but never, ever, ever did I see him so excited as he was for Savvy Wisdom. Now, some people might say, well, it's because it's about him. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> well, Not necessarily, because he had sent me a text just a few weeks before he, he died. He sent me a few texts and he said this. He said, it's you in print, Peg. He said, keep going. That's what he said. It's you in print, which surprised me. And I remember getting that text and thinking, you know, do I really believe that Savvy Wisdom is me in print, like all three books? I guess somewhat I wrote it, but I don't think it's me. I think it's universal messages, really, because it, it floated through me. It flowed through me. And part of it is Bob, you know, Bob Proctor and the wisdom that he taught me. But not only Bob. Bob wasn't the only teacher, if you will. And, and I have many other wonderful master teachers that are no longer on this planet, but have guided me over the last 40 plus years that I've been involved in this study. So I would say it's like a collective consciousness is really yeah. what it is. So he said, it's you in print. I believe it's collective consciousness in print. And so is everybody else's book, not just mine, everybody else's too. So when somebody like Napoleon Hill wrote a book, he wrote it based on what his you know, uh, inspiration was and the information that he had regurgitated, if you will, you know, so he did interviews for 20 years with the most successful people on the planet to find out what was their mindset all about and what did they believe and what did they do and, and all of that, which became one of the greatest, if not the greatest self-help book in the history of the world, which is Think and Grow Rich. And that's universal consciousness too. He just took the initiative to take that information and to write it and to put it into print, which is what every author does. That's what you did, Vladdy, with, with your book is it's collective consciousness of what you've learned over the course of 40 plus years that you've been on the planet. And you know, I love what you said about Bob's messages, because I remember I was crying reading the first Savvy Wisdom, and it was because it was the it was the transformation which I've started, and it was you and Bob who just had such a profound impact on my life and I remember you sharing the messages with which Bob was texting you like he loved it he really loved it so I, <laughs> I still feel his energy in that as well totally. and, I, and this is why it's so powerful like who would you say I mean not regardless that everyone should read the book but what is the what are the most powerful messages I, I know there are old collective of and I love what you actually said right. about experience because all these experience why would someone want to go 40 years and experience something when you can actually really transform yourself so fast? Exactly. Oh my goodness, you're so right, Vladi. Like when I think about who's going to benefit from reading it, uh, I think, you know, you mentioned children. I think children yeah. would definitely benefit. I I haven't asked my grandson, who's 11 years old, you know, today to, to read the book, but I hope he does. Because I think he'll benefit from it. And uh, like last year, he lost his uncle. And so there's a young child who's experiencing grief in his life. And I find children tend to handle it better than adults. Yeah. And, uh, you know, for whatever reason, they do handle it better, better for adults. But just based on what I'm receiving, as far as the responses are concerned, it is, I think it's the understanding of the death and dying process, what really goes on what happens next, because as you read in Savvy Wisdom from Beyond, most people live in fear of dying, Yes, but we're all going to do it. Every yes. single person is going to die, every single person. So there's a dialogue that goes on with Savvy and Sophie about that. There's another 
part of the book where Savvy talks about grief and that process, and which is a, a natural experience for, for many people, but he explains it differently and uniquely and, and helps you understand how, like where Savvy, you know, gives a suggestion to Sophie about grief, like do it now. Like get it over with, right? And it's not something that you have to experience for years and years and years and years and years and years and years, and years which some people do. I mean, yeah. some people like last, I'll give you an example of that. Last Friday, a very, very close friend of mine came over for a sleepover and like girls, you know, having their own little girly sleepover. And this is a, a wonderful friend of mine that um, lost her husband when she was 38. She was a young mother of two young children. And at 38 years of age, her husband died suddenly. And he was the sole provider of her family. So she had to obviously get to work. It wasn't expected. You know, it, it, he ended up getting cancer and dying within a few short months. And then just a, a couple of years later, her daughter was killed. And I think most people would be like devastated. And her daughter is 11, you know, same age as my grandson and your son, right? 11 years of age. And I knew, I gave the eulogy at her funeral, actually. I, I knew them very, very well. We were close friends, very close. And because uh, she had lost her husband and she had, her son ended up going to a special sports school. He was trained to be an Olympian and he had moved out at the age of 12 to go to this special school. So it was her and her daughter. And of course, her son is very much in her life. But when she lost her daughter, I mean, that would, for most people, they'd be done, right? And you know something, in the beginning, she was, you know, she didn't want to live. And uh, I ended up staying with her for a little while. Um, because many people were concerned about her, yeah. her state, you know, state of mind. But you know, we talked about it last Friday when she was here, because that was 23 years ago, 23 years ago that it happened. And we're talking about it because she she's found the gift, right? She found not that, you know, this any of this is something that she wanted or desired. Of course, it's not. But she found the blessings and she healed from it. And she, you know, created some campaigns after her daughter died on organ donor awareness, because that was something that she had chosen to do and saved other people's lives. And and she had the most extraordinary attitude you know, that, that I've ever seen. And then later she got remarried and then her husband died. And it's like, oh my goodness. And it's just like extraordinary. And I was telling her, I said, you know, you sitting here and talking about how happy you are, because she's happy. You know, she's happy with her life and how grateful she feels is so extraordinary. Now, can anyone do it? Absolutely anyone can do it. And I gave her a copy of Savvy Wisdom from Beyond while she was here. And I said, I'd love for you to read this and, uh, and you know, hear your thoughts. And she sent me a note on Sunday, sent me a text saying she had just finished reading it and loved it. And that it brought her back. I mean, it reminded her of good things, like in a good way, right? And she understands, you know, the messages and she understands grief and she understands how important it is to heal from that. She understands to look for the blessings and find the gifts and, you know, stay in a state of gratitude for herself, right? And for anyone else that's in, in her life, because it is important. So I think it's going to, you know, be attracted to people for different reasons. I think people are going to experience it. Like even my sister, Judy, who read it, and as she was reading it, she was sending me texts because of what was happening with mom. Because in Savvy Wisdom from Beyond, big part of the story is what happened to my mom. And that's all mm -hmm. true. And Judy knows it's true. So she was sending me texts going, this is hard to read, you know, because of, you know, because she says, I'm reliving it again. And uh, and I understand that because when I wrote Savvy Wisdom 2, the sequel, where Sophie goes through the, you know, the health challenge. Yeah. Oh boy, that was, that was so fresh after I had gone through, um, you know, my experience that it was still, I could still experience the emotional pain of that, even though, you know, I had healed from it and I'm, you know, significantly stronger today than what I was even a year ago. Um, but it was still fresh, but I knew enough to understand what was necessary. So I really think Vladdy, that there's going to be a variety of people that are going to experience this book in their own way, in their own unique way. And that was my intention. My intention is to help, 
help whoever, whatever, in whatever way that I can. I'm so confident that it will help in so many ways and so many levels. And I think I will, I will um, just add a little thing that I actually went to see uh, a visit a family member in um, sort of Alzheimer's uh, center, and they had some people with uh, dementia. And there were a couple of situations where we, from our perception, went like, <gasps> and and the ladies who actually look after these people, they said, oh, don't worry, this is just, they're having their moment, they're having a happy memory. And we were sort of like, and that's what really, I just felt this like, if you understand what's yeah. happening and you know, then you don't have to react. It's what we assume and the assumption right. we make based on experience, which we don't really have without understanding, that gives us a result. And then we can actually experience rolling ourselves in a negative energy. Like, And I think savvy wisdom is that's why it really brought me, like you said, everybody relates to something else. It really brought me back to what we're going through. And I thought, People in the home care centers, home facilities, they should have your book because right. it's the family who really finds it important to actually have some kind of awareness and better understanding because all they're looking at is like they, they might not be doing giving them an extra care. Well, actually they are, but they understand what they need and we don't. And yes. that's absolutely. why I thought of Savvy Wisdom from beyond straight away, going like families will absolutely, and not just families, like you said, there are so many impactful messages throughout the three series of all books that I just can strongly recommend you read them. I read them all, love them all. There are so many people who are already responding to them in the best possible way. And I have such a belief that this book really broad like spirit of Bob and Peggy and all the messages and really shortened the powerful, or I would say it's the collection. You know, when you go through the live and you collect the best experiences, you could just hold that. You know how valuable mm -hmm. that is? Like to have your wins in the bag, you could be like <laughs> selling that precious pot of gold, which is the wisdom of collecting that just came through me. I never said that before, but it was really good. It's like we, we collect all these highlights of what we learned. And sometimes it's something that we experience for a long time to understand how we can overcome it quite quick. And mm -hmm. I think this, these books really bring people to understanding, deeper understanding. Yeah, I yeah. think you're right. And, and, you know, like with anybody's book, I don't think everyone's going to resonate with it. There's going to be some people who will think it's baloney. Like, yeah, you're really connecting with spirit. I mean, there may be, but you can't please all the people all the time. And, you know, my my desire is, is that it's going to impact those that really are seeking to receive that message. Because I know, I really know, like completely in my heart that it's going to positively impact people in the series too, not just the, the, yeah. you know, the third one, but the first and the second one too i mean just before you and i got on this interview i was looking at the course that i created and bob told me to do it he said you got to create a course called savvy's proven success principles and here's what you're going to do and i did i followed his instructions i got that course done we released it to the world and so i was looking at it today because i'm going to update it and add more of the valuable lessons from savvy wisdom Two and savvy wisdom from beyond because oh, they were released after the course was was delivered but i was reviewing it this morning and you know looking at what i said like in the videos and the and in the workbook and and really just talking about you know the impact of implementing it's all about implementation. It's not enough to study or to read and go, oh, yeah, yeah, I get it, or I agree with it. It comes down, and that's what we were reading this morning in Club Achieve. That's what we're studying. Without the application, it means nothing. It yes. means nothing. You've got to apply it in your life as well. So it's so- You know, today, I, I just came across the message which said, knowing syndrome, where people come to the point where they say, I know that. Oh, I know universe does it. I know I have to be in alignment. I know this. I know that. But are we doing it? It's that gap, which is actually the key to having the results. And, yeah. you know, I love reading through that before we finish. Like, I always question something because I don't know, obviously, all the stories. Like, is that true? <laughs> is that <laughs> true? Because it is your first fiction books, isn't it? Like, yeah. 
And I love how you decided, Peggy actually decided. I remember we were having a team meeting and no, actually it wasn't me. It wasn't a me. It was, it was, uh, it was sunny, wasn't it? When she sent you a, um, a list of yeah. uh, stuff and, and Peggy said, mm. the topics. Yeah. yeah, the topics. It was November, it was October 31st, 2020 that I received an email that suggested topics for creating video messages little snippets, right? And the topic was, the next topic that she suggested was how I wrote my first fiction book. And I thought, well, I almost just dismissed it and went to the next topic. And the first thought I had was, well, I've never written a fiction book, so why would I do a video on that? Like I wouldn't out of authenticity and integrity. And then I just had a dialogue with myself that went like this. Do you want to write a fiction book? I thought, yeah. Okay, well, what do you need to believe to write a great one and to have the whole process be enjoyable and easy? I need to believe that I can and I need to believe it's done. Okay, well, let's get to work. And I set a date to have the book done in 10 days. And it was, it was done in nine, actually. And again, my agenda was fairly full because I have client calls, teaching calls, Q&A calls, you know, team meetings and things like that. So I just looked at my agenda and made a date Okay, I'm going to finish it on the 10th of November. And I just started to block off hours where I would write. And same as what I did with Savvy Wisdom from Beyond. I just sat down in the corner in my office here. I call it my writing chair, although I can write anywhere. I don't only have to write there. I can write anywhere. And I just sat down and I closed the door of my office and told my husband, don't disturb. I'm not that he ever does. Um, and then just put fingers on the keyboard and just said to spirit, what needs I didn't even know the name of the book when I started writing it I didn't know Savvy's name that came to me and you know what's fascinating about that Vladdy is when I was writing Savvy Wisdom the first one I you know I was thinking I don't even know what Savvy's name is going to be and it wasn't until I was sitting in the chair with fingers on the keyboard and I started to write that it came to me his name is going to be Savvy now that's a very, it's not S-A-V-V-Y, it's one V, S-A-V-Y. And I knew it was S-A-V-Y. I didn't know why. And it wasn't until later that it came to me again. It stands for Stephen Alexander Vaughn. It's a short, it's like S-A-V are his initials, Stephen Alexander Vaughn. But people called him Savvy. It was a nickname that people called him. And it wasn't until the end of the book that I discovered what it was. So it's kind of like, as you're reading it, I'm writing it. I'm creating it as it's going along. So that was fun. Now, there are many things in all three books that are true, that are based on or inspired by real life events. And what's fun is when someone who knows me reads it and then they call going, wait a minute, is that part real? You know, like, and that's the fun part. So and I love talking about that part, too, because my cousin, uh, my my cousin, Marianne, who had read the first book, as soon as she read it, called me and said, okay, we got to go over the book from start to finish. What's true? What's not? Like, were you really suicidal when you were a teenager? That's the part that a lot of my relatives didn't know. I didn't tell anybody. And, you know, my neighbor asked me that recently. She said, when you were suicidal, did you tell anyone? It's like, nope. And that's what happens when people are at that, that desperation point in their life where they feel they can't go on. They're not talking about it. They're quiet, right? In their own in their own little space. And I was in a space of how do I do it? How am I going to end my life? And uh, and I can talk about it now because it's like another person. And it was long before I got into the materials and long before I met Bob. But I didn't meet Bob Proctor on a bench in a park. <laughs> I met him at a seminar. Yeah, um, we know that. <laughs> but I did go to that Some bench. Of us. <laughs> right. But I did go to that bench in the park mm -hmm. the day I wanted to kill myself. And right after my high school sweetheart ended our relationship, I was devastated. And so that part is true. And uh, but it's fun. It's fun discussing what's true, what's not, you know, what was inspired, like even in Savvy Wisdom from Beyond, you know, as you know, and I don't want to give away too much, but what happened with my mom was almost, you know, exactly what happened my dad no not the same story because uh my dad had already in real life he had passed away three years before my mom passed away but uh i put it in there for i don't know i felt inspired to do it that mm -hmm. way it, it was, did it, it was actually nicely done 
yeah. yeah. I encourage yeah, I encourage you guys to see see the question I had in the first book. I was wondering whether your brother really gave him a heart. Okay, his heart, right? Yeah. Well, you know, my my brother died when he was forty nine. In the book, he died when he was in his twenties, and. In the book, in the first book, he had the car accident, right? Where he's driving in his Ford Galaxy 500. And I can remember that because that's what he was driving. And I remember one, one night, and this actually did happen. He got this new car, this Ford Galaxy 500. He put a new stereo in it. And he went, and we were living in North of Toronto at the time. And he had gone for a drive. And it actually happened where he had the stereo so loud that there was an ambulance coming through an intersection and his music was so loud, he couldn't hear anything. And he broadside, he hit the ambulance broadside and had a big accident. The ambulance flipped over and spun around and that accident happened. But my brother, his name was Gary, by the way, not Braden, but Gary lived, you know, as a result of that accident. But when I was writing it, I wrote it as if, you know, as you know, from the book that that's not what happened. So that that was interesting too, how the relatives responded to that. <laughs> I certainly had some questions like, Ooh, is that true? <laughs> oh, there's a, there's another part like in, in Savvy Wisdom too, you know, because in the books, as you know, she marries Eddie. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm probably giving away way too much <laughs> right now. <laughs> and uh, in the beginning of, of Savvy Wisdom too, you know, as you know, uh, she she catches him in bed with with someone that did not happen. <laughs> and so <laughs> it didn't happen with my husband, Charles, you know, my first husband, that did not happen. But it's interesting, you know, how people think, oh my God, did Charles do that to you? <laughs> no, he did not. <laughs> so, it must be actually funny to see a family um, to respond right. to some of the things and give us the last, I know I've taken a lot of your time, but the last thing I wanted to ask, or don't give too much away, but you went to a hotel where actually, Savvy wrote the letter and it is yeah. a real Bob who wrote the letter for the Savvy. Yes. How did oh it God. feel? Oh my God, I got goosebumps. I still have goosebumps as you're saying it. Like, you know, when you get goosebumps and they come and then they go, they're, they're psh, whole body experience. So it was on Monday, November 10th that I sent an email to Bob. It was like 10 37 in the morning. And I sent him an email and I just said, Bob, you know, 10 days ago, I got inspired to write this book. It's unique. I've never written a book like this. It's a parable. It is inspired by my life. I created a character named Sophie who meets someone named Savvy, your Savvy. And uh, I said, I would love for you to write the final letter from Savvy to Sophie that's going to end the book. And of course, that means he has to read the book, <laughs> right? And <laughs> so... I, uh, I sent him an email and two minutes later, he replied and he said, okay, I've just gotten to the end. I just checked in. Uh, I'm going to be working here, creating my own program this week. Um, but I'll have Gina print the book for me and I'll, you know, I'll take a look. And so that night he, Gina, that day they worked. And of course, Gina had the book printed and sent it to his suite. And he said, <laughs> the next morning he sent me a text and he said, I'm mad at you. No, he's kidding. Right. <laughs> said oh what did I do and he said well you kept me awake he said I started reading it last night at 11 and he said at one o'clock I finally fell asleep and I got up early this morning because I didn't you know I wanted to finish it and he said it's so amazing I mean he was going bananas over the book already and he said I'll have the letter to you later on this week so he wrote it and when I got it I, so he did I mean he he wrote the yeah. letter in this book now, for Savvy Wisdom 2, when I was writing that book, he was dying. He was in the hospital dying. I actually wrote two endings. And I, I yeah, and I had to substitute the ending that was more closely aligned with what really happened. But it was, it was amazing to uh, receive his energy. And of course, as you know, in, in the, uh, I mean, the third book, Second book he didn't read because he had passed away um, before it was released, but he definitely read the first one and was madly in love with it. And uh, that's the second one. He said, it's you in print. And then the third one, I just really connected to his spirit. I could hear him speaking to me. I could literally hear him giving me guidance. And so it's in the book. And because uh, there was stuff that came through me that I was completely unaware of. I would never have said that or wrote that what's in the book. 
And you see it like with the dialogue yeah. that goes on, right? Like yeah. Sophie's going, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> wait, wait a minute, hold on, Savvy. You're telling me this? And because you can tell that's what I was experiencing. Even as I was writing it, it's like this dialogue is going on in real life form in my mind. Um, so it's uh, it was amazing. I mean, that man, Bob Proctor, was so extraordinary. Nobody was ever like him. Nobody will ever be like him. Um, what a gift he was in my life, in so many people's lives as well. And so I'm really, really grateful that I knew him. And had I known 20 some odd years ago when I first <laughs> wrote my first book that I'd be led to this. I mean, if you had told me, Vladdy, 22 <laughs> years ago, you're going to write 21 books and three of them are going to be fiction. And I would have said, yeah, right. Like, <laughs> I don't think so. But uh, anyways, here but we are. you are a woman of action. You really inspire so many because so many people talk about things and never get them done. And it's like, okay. it's not the talking that actually creates success. And it's, yeah. it's success is just defined. It's such a wide definition we could go on for a very long time but it really is amazing and you're inspiring how you just get on with it you know so how it all started and now it's going to be screen and you're going to write the script i'm just assuming <laughs> i see you writing your own screenplay that's how you start I could writing totally do that. i know i could you know i like the way you say success it always sounds like sex and uh, <laughs> I, know. And I, I just i just had this thought pop in my mind sexy savvy <laughs> maybe not the right title but anyways this is the we joke always, I suppose. yeah we always bring it to a life uh, energy in people's <laughs> right yeah. right well one of bob's favorite chapters in thinking grow rich is the chapter on sex transmutation it's an energy <laughs> right it's an energy yeah. and frankly you and i wouldn't be here without that so yeah. Um, it's just part of the the part of life. It's just part of part of life. Yeah, and, I remember. I remember he in his six minutes of success when he was actually talking about a six uh, was it the seven positive emotions. One of them is sex. It was just lightening up. It just brings <laughs> life into people, whether they admit it or not. <laughs> I know. And whenever he was on stage and talking about that, you should see the discomfort in the audience, right? <laughs> Here's a, like an 80 some odd year old man on stage talking about <laughs> sex. And, you know, he, I remember one time sitting in the back of the room on the logistics table with Danny Proctor, that's Bob's grandson, Brian's son. And I said to him, like, I just turned to look at him, you know, watching his, his grandfather. And I said, you know, most people's grandfathers aren't like yours. <laughs> Nope. This is not <laughs> yeah, That's true. <laughs> I remember my grandma opening her dress in front of the TV when any kind of scene was just about kissing those days. <laughs> so yeah. Oh bless. Thank you, Peggy, so much. And I'm so thrilled. I'm absolutely honored that I could do this interview. I love the books. Again, you can buy them guys on Amazon. You can just go on PeggyMeckle.com. She's got everything in there. Savvy wisdom success principles. <laughs> I'm gonna use that word. Again. <laughs> <laughs> they should be sex principles, but success principles. I love mm -hmm. this program and I actually love them when Peggy said that she's adding more stuff into it, which connects to the all three books, because those snippets of the most powerful teachings are so good. And my sister actually taken the program, so she loved that. <laughs> oh, that's great. I'm happy to hear that. Yeah. So thank you so much for all your valuable time. I know how super busy you are. I've learned from you. If you want something to get done, ask a busy person. <laughs> That's it. Exactly. Well, such a pleasure. Do you realize, Vladi, this is my first interview for Savvy Wisdom from Beyond? Owner. <laughs> I'm and glad it's me because actually when I started interviewing authors, it was through starting with you and that I idea came through you to just help authors somehow tell their story so people can connect to their personal energies not me presenting the book but actually them presenting it themselves because that energy you gave is so much different than other although other people talking about it is amazing and recommending it it's actually hearing it from you it has that power that's so great well thank you i really appreciate you thank you as well <laughs> <laughs>